What's up, fam? Welcome back to another exciting edition of Keith Walker Books Reads. Um, make sure you like this video. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see you around again. All right, so today I'm going to read you a poem written by Claude McKay. This is uh, published in 1919 in response to an event called the Red Summer. I'll give you more detail about that event after I read it. Uh, as far as Claude McKay, he's a uh, Jamaican-born poet. He's world-renowned. In the United States, he's most notably known for the work he did uh, during the Harlem Renaissance, which took place in the 1920s. So this is If We Must Die. If we must die, let it not be like hogs hunted and pinned in an inglorious spot while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs making their mock at our cursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave. And for their thousand blows, deal one death blow. What though before us lies an open grave? Like men, we'll face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. All right, so that's that poem. That is a very powerful poem. All right, so like I said, this poem was written as a rallying, rallying cry during an event that historians have uh, dubbed the Red Summer. The Red Summer took place in 1919 in the United States. And if you haven't heard of it, please understand that that is by design. So in America, in history class at least, America likes to um, you know, glorify our heroes, our pioneers, the people who made America great. But when it comes to some of the... Um, bad things that Americans did, particularly bad things that white people did to black people, slaves or whatever, that kind of gets swept under the rug. I mean, take me, for instance. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I truly love history. It's something that I value. I study it independently. But I was like this in high school as well, but I still managed to make it all the way through high school and never hear about the Red Summer, not once. I also never heard about the... Uh, Tulsa race riots, which was 1921, I believe, also known as the Black Wall Street Massacre. I mean, at that time, the white mob just ran up in there in this affluent black area and just slaughtered hundreds, hundreds of black people, just burned the whole city to the ground for, um, I think the reason they had is some criminal had done something to a white woman. I don't know. And that's how it usually starts. Anyway, he lived in this area, so they decided let's just, you know, take him out. But also that was rooted in jealousy because in this particular city, town, the black part of town was doing better than the white part of town, which is rare. But that's pretty much the root of what caused them to just go in and lay waste to the whole thing. But anyway, as far as the Red Summer, this took place in the United States. It was not an in, uh, isolated incident like the Tulsa race rise. This happened across many different states, many different cities. And basically what it was was a bunch of riots and black people were the target of the riots and they were they were killing them they were just straight up killing black people there were a lot of lynchings they were just going pretty hard on them as far as the um, spark that led to this there was not one isolated thing it was one of the reasons why it happened is because world war one ended and about three hundred and eighty thousand black veterans came back and you know, they had been all around the world. They had been in France, Germany. They had actually killed white men in Germany. And when they got back, uh, a lot of the white people were afraid, in the South in particular, that they weren't going to be the type of people that would come back and just submit to Jim Crow and just submit to being subjugated as second-class citizens again. They, they were going to probably rise up against this. And in some cases, they did. They, um, they fought back against some of the Jim Crow laws and they complain about their work conditions. And anyway, back then, whenever something like this happened and, and um, white people start to feel threatened, that's when the KKK came back. So they started lynching people. During this summer, there were 97 lynchings or more that weren't even documented. There was 25 riots. And I'm like I said, it's about, this is going on in multiple states. Um, many, many people were killed. Hundreds of black people were killed. 
the notable thing about this particular uprising was the black people actually fought back to, to a degree. Now, the number of white people that were actually killed when they fought back was nowhere near the hundreds of black people who were killed, but they did fight back and they did defend themselves. And it was, it was a time period where they were really trying to get everybody to understand that we don't have to take this. So in comes Claude McKay. So he writes this poem, If We Must Die. And like I said, this is a rallying, rallying cry to the black people of that time period that we don't have to take this. And all the lines in the poem is just, it's like one of the, one of the best um, mantras for anyone who's in a position where you don't have, if you're gonna die, you're gonna die anyway. They got, to, they got us outnumbered, they're coming, they got dogs or whatever. And if we must die anyway, then let's die like men. Let's fight back. He said, if we must die, let it not be like hogs hunted and pinned in an inglorious spot while round us mark, bark the mad and angry dogs. So they're gonna come anyway. But if we're gonna die, let us nobly die so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. And he says that if we fight back to the extent where he wants to fight back, even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us though dead. And you, you know that happens in history. It happens with Confederacy right now. They fought back against the Union. They, they obviously they lost, they lost the Civil War, but all the Confederate soldiers, they're still honored because they fought back nobly. So that's, that's the kind of thing he was uh, getting at. And um, though far outnumbered, let us show us brave and for their thousand blows deal one death blow. So even though they, they're coming at us, they may kill hundreds of us. If we could just get at least one of them or one or two, then it'll be worth it. Because like he says, what though before us lies the open grave. So we're gonna die anyway. So why not fight back? And the last two lines are beautiful. Like men will face the murderous cowardly pack pressed to the wall dying but fighting back. All right, so that's that poem. That's the background on it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to post a comment, let me know what you thought of this poem or what poem you think I should tackle next. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, this would be a great time to do it. Hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see you around again. Appreciate your support and I'll see you next time.